Gregory Estrada here at Kalahari High School event. Checking in 2654P, pronounce this out of Colorado. What a phenomenal season so far. Four event wins, three of those being triple crowns as well too. So what a great start as they come in here to Kalahari and looking really good. As we're recording this at the end of day one, currently ranked third in the uh, rankings. Third in true skill overall worldwide. So what a great performance. But check out this robot so far. Lots to talk about, uh, including a really great integration with their catapult and their hang mechs. We're talking about different uses of polycarb on the robot and then showcasing their 2D motion profiling that's doing as well too. Let's learn about this incredible team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Luke, let's start off on this robot talking about your catapult and your climbers. I love the integration that you're bringing and you're actually doing two climbers integrated in one as well too, which I think is really cool. Tell me about what's gone into it. When did you start implementing it and how has it been working out for you? Yeah, so we have this puncher right here. We have a high strength shaft running across covered in mesh. Uh, that just uh, swings back and hits the tri balls up like this. And we actually have a distance sensor right here that senses when a tri ball is in front of it. and so. It's primed like this throughout the match. If ever we have to match load or during skills, we will just put a try ball here and it'll shoot. Alex can show you here. And it waits for the try ball to be there before it shoots. And we actually have a passive hanging mech that pops up when we lift this uh, blocker that we have and we will drive up onto it. This rides up the pole and then we hang on this right here. It's like a transformer coming out almost by the way with that whole folding out mechanism. When you're looking at from a, a match strategy standpoint, uh, at what point do you say, hey, we wanted to integrate all this into one package uh, and what, how, when did you make this change? Is this something you've had all season? We actually just added the hang mechs on the side here for the barrier climb. Uh, we've had this design for this robot before we had a catapult that would crunch us down to get a B tier and so we've had this for a month or two now and we added it because we didn't have enough space for a different kind of hang because we have a puncher and not anything that can easily crunch us up to a B or a C tier. One thing I'm going to ask you with the uh, sensor on your robot for the puncher as well too. Is there more of a delay by having something like that versus just like an auto cycle or something like that? There is no delay at all. It runs at 133 RPM and when it senses it, it senses it a little bit farther away than when we place it on. So it starts to pull back as it's coming. So by the time the ball's there, it's already trying to shoot it. So again, so pretty fast cycles, all that. And I've seen that once again too on the field. It looks absolutely awesome. Uh, so can't wait to, uh, to see that performance with it. So you go in the playoffs hopefully tomorrow too. Uh, Carl, let's talk about polycarb on your robot here. Uh, lots of different spots to see it, including uh, the side uh, side plate on your roller here. Love to hear about that and all the different implementations you've been doing with it. Uh, yeah, so a really big part of our robot is optimizing basically every part of it. And polycarbonate is a really nice way to do that since we can customize it in almost every way. So you can see on the side of the intake here, we are able to keep a very thin, smooth profile. Whereas if you used a sprocket or something, it can get entangled in the net. Uh, we're also able to bend polycarbonate, as you can see in the back here. Uh, that allows us to coast on the wall and not get stuck in the different seams, especially on the metal fields. So that is really nice for matches. And then uh, on the inside of our robot, you can actually see a couple gussets. So both of these towers are connected at the top and then also at the bottom with polycarbonate. And that allows us to have a very customizable shape, which is uh, really light as a connection. And then it's also really simple to build. A couple of our teams that we've interviewed here have had uh, kind of the side rollers uh, on that for, for gliding against. How has polycarb interacted against the field? Like, are you still able to glide pretty well on that? Or do you stick or anything like that? Uh, we are still able to glide pretty well. We switched away from the rollers because they took up a lot of space and then they would also break. 
Uh, this is just a really lightweight solution, and it's been really robust so far. No, I love the implementation of it. That's, that's awesome. So 2D motion profiling is something that I think more and more teams really should be looking at. And you did a custom setup here, which I think is really cool. Uh, so Alex, as you're uh, looking in regards to autonomous mode, uh, talk to us about some of your different uh, systems that you're using for that, and let's actually show off how you can modify what your autonomous looks like, too. So initially this year, we started out with just straight movements or simple curves around a circle. And we found that that was pretty fast last year when you had those long straight movements across the field. But this year on this compact field with so many objects and barriers, we found it was really hard to get around there real efficiently. So we investigated several options. We used Pure Pursuit and Odometry in the past. But we found that, uh, especially with the compact packages required for this year's game, it was really hard to fit in the odometry, uh, that odometry system. Um, so we decided that we would go without any odometry system this year and rely purely on motor encoders and the IMU readings. Based off of that, we thought the best solution would be 2D uh, motion profiling because it allows for these complex movements uh, relatively simply. And once we make a graph for utility, we could uh, easily and efficiently make these complex paths uh, on the fly and fix them on the fly for competitions. So walk me through a couple of these paths and uh, how you end up designing them and then uh, show to me how you can actually do the modifications uh, on the fly for it too. So for our robot we have this path planner utility here and it shows our a graph of the field here along with this path. For example this is our skills path at the end here. So we start here, fish the tribal out and go across and you can see we can come over here and drag all the points allowing for easy modification, and this automatically saves into the code and we can upload it immediately onto the robot. Well, overall, 2654P, what an impressive machine uh, you have put together. Love all the thought processes that, that go into it, the constant implementation, and of course, it's been paying off very good dividends for you so far this season. So good luck here at Kalahari. Thanks for a lot telling us about your team and your robot, and can't wait to see how you do the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.